and welcome to On Stage. South African stage gets a production that takes you to different stages of different shows, different theatres, different productions. Today, we are here at home at the South African State Theatre and not on any set of any form, in anything in particular. However, we are in conversations about a show called Magnificent Seven. Magnificent Seven is a part of the Kucheza Dance Festival, and joining me is the choreographer of the show, Ndudusi Nklao. How are you, sir? I'm well today. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. You are no stranger to us. You're a friend of the show. You're the friend of the South African State Theatre, and it's good to have you here. It's good to be here. Thank you. Please tell me about the Magnificent Seven. How old is it? Because I know I asked you this, but I want the people at home to hear. Yeah. So, I don't know if production you'll, it has played once mm. in the Kucheza mm. last year mm. in 2021. So, depending on how you measure the age of the production, it has played once last year. So, it's probably one year old. So, it has played once, but it has been in production for like a while longer than that because it had to have been a seed in your head. No, it has been in my head. Mm. It hasn't been projected anywhere else. It has been uh, conceptualized in my head and then was just awaiting that opportunity. And then when I got the call to be part of um, the Kucheza, it was a two-day um, season. So we played it for two days. Nice. But you know, it takes a month to make a one-day production. Of course, of mm. course. So what is Magnificent Seven and why that title is specific? So Magnificent Seven is a is a mystical tale of a turbulent journey of a group of individuals who are at the helm of an apocalypse. So with that line, what I'm saying is what you see when you're watching Magnificent Seven, you see a group of people who are at the brink of the end of the world and they have to survive. So coming with the title, it was because the work is spiritual and seven became the number to speak of the spiritual completeness. Then I called it Magnificent Seven because of the number of the cast members, the number of the band members, the number of tracks that we are using. Magnificent Seven is also divided into chapters. So the chapters that the work is showing is showing seven chapters. So then I called it Magnificent Seven because all these chapters were magnificent in their own right. Chapter one to chapter seven. It's just listening to you and I'm thinking about it in my head. I'm like, oh, so now it's starting to make sense. It is so important to do the work, put it out there and then come back and have these conversations because I feel like as a, like a regular person, so to put it, no offense to anybody, it would not be an easy thing to understand. Do you feel like in translating what you were saying into the work, is it transparent or is it difficult to find? One of my um, commitment in the theater fraternity is to make sure that I, I nurse my audience, meaning I treat them like a child. We take them through step by step. They do not miss anything. So as I do the work of Magnificent Seven with other works that I do, Though I use this intricate language, which is physicality, I believe and I always say the body is a temple of truth. So the way I tackle the truth with the body, my audience also, I make sure they are with me. And the way I translate it as well, the dramaturgy process that I go through with, I make sure that I break it down, its complexity to its simplest forms so that people can understand. Because after all, it's a revolution that we are pushing and then we need our audience to be with us. It doesn't help to be abstract and make people not understand our work. So what message are you sending when you are in the show and then you're doing it? The thing that you do, I, can't, I don't know what it, do you, does it have a name? Do you yes. call it something? What do you call it? Yes, so, so because I spoke of these seven people or characters in Magnificent Seven, the first character we have is, the, is like a, 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 an African sage or African professor a black man from Africa who is writing. Ah. So that, is, that de de depicts a typewriter. So from the beginning of the story, 
the story is a thriller. So it starts, when it starts, you can see that the writer is in danger. Because Magnificent Seven, the tale that we are telling there, we are telling nothing but Pan-Africanism. Nothing but Pan-Africanism. Yes. We will hear more about that after the break when I see you back here on on set with the different additions to the production. <laughs> see you after the break. Welcome back to On Set. Still in conversation about Magnificent Seven, a dance production that is a part of the Kucheza International Dance Festival. If you're only joining us now, sadly you have just missed Ndwin Tabo, who is the choreographer and director. Mara, do not despair. We still have more. Right now joining me is the production manager of Magnificent Seven, Miss Ndombikaisu Swan. <laughs> the beautiful, the stunning. Let me hold it there. No, it's about too much. <laughs> as well as the musical director, Bonafide Billy. Woohoo, that's that, there it is. Please tell me about how your collaboration with Magnificent Seven started. Uh, thank you for having me, Bukwinti. My collaboration with Magnificent Seven is more of my collaboration with Mdun Tabo. When Mdun Tabo came to me and gave me the opportunity to work with him, he told me that Magnificent Seven addresses directly um, the problem of our African state, which was instigated by colonization, and how Magnificent Seven has the necessity to restore our history, our identity, and the cultural terrorism and predation of self-justifying European guilt. So when he gave me that, and when he told me that, I got to understand the assignment and why we had designated um, our typewriter in the production, he, was, he, he opened the show for us. The typewriter there entails the stories of, of Pan-Africanism. And what I have learned from you being a philosopher is that when you speak of Pan-Africanism or any ideology that seeks to help reinstate the African state, it needs to solely find itself within the origins of Pan-Africanism. And that is the stories that our typewriter was telling. The, the, the introduction of policies in that process, what he is writing is solely aligned with Pan-Africanism. So when we look at the typewriter and the story and everything that is, is being told there, we thought, let us funnel it down and let us bring it closer to, to dance, to movement, as far as theater is concerned. And that is why when you look at the story, you can see ballet, you can see Pantola, and the way in which we tell the story through movement, as well as how it, it played a bigger part in our patterns of cultural development as well as spirituality. As an African society, we were inv invaded as far as our religion, as far as our traditions are concerned. So that is what I've learned as far as Ndunta's philosophy and school of thought. And yeah, that, that is what it meant to me when I was collaborating. And then what would you say your interpretation or your, your definition in your own thought, in, in Dombi Gaiz's philosophy and nobody else's? Would you explain it the same way? I would. You identify with Ndunthapu, you identify with Pan-Africanism, you become that. As a young philosopher myself, I get to understand that I'm not about to start a new philosophy for myself. I'm about to adopt the philosophy that was there and find ways in which I can regenerate from what perspective am I going to speak about. Then I know that the restoration of Africa is the re restoration of blackness and is, it is the restoration of, of our Pan-African ideas. So you cannot align with the ideas of Ndun Tapo and say, okay, now I'm going to find something else. If it's all in restoration of our blackness, then it becomes one thing. Um, Stokely Carmichael said in, in one of his books that it would be very detrimental for us to want to separate our ideas or Africa as far as you know the scramble of Africa is concerned and what had happened. We need to know that it is one thing. And if we can make our ideas one thing, then there is no need for us to go look for our own ideas. We align with the ideas that are there from our leaders. 
absolutely I, I i hear you and understand you do you think that the way that everything that you have explained and said is it just as easily to digest for regular people you make it through dance through physical movement you speak through that we don't you know when you look at dance you just love the entertainment you see people dancing it does not speak with us so when 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 you have different audience we have your oh mama from ekaya a student from school like myself studying political science i've no background of theater i do not understand dance but when you look at magnificent seven you don't even need to understand dance you need to understand the whole institute that ndun sapo brings in magnificent seven what it is what it carries out how it is implemented you get to understand and when you understand you are included you are involved and it's not just about seeing it's also about feeling you know magnificent seven is spiritual so it's also about feeling what is happening absolutely i hear you and speaking of feeling and being spiritual and speaking of the translation of your work the music in magnificent seven is magnificent and none other from the the genius behind it all bonafide billy please talk me through your collaboration and your inspiration especially with the music Iti longo si kulule ni si guyele ne makaya ekaya. Um, shout out to my big homie Do. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for being um, here. So there's a crazy story. Mm-hmm. I was at home um, going through my my process. And um, I wasn't done yet, actually. I was, I was a bit flimsical. Um, I hadn't reintegrated with society yet. Mm. And Ndu comes through with this low rider. The car's like the Batmobile. <laughs> and he pulls up at the top of the mountains and stuff. like. <laughs> and there's like gang squad deep cats in the back there. What folks will it done? He's like. You even have to like those roads are messed up. Can that he bro? So he's like, so and so I will let me know. I got what I said. Mo, mo di tabe die, and he pulls up on me. You're like, screw the Batmobile. Like these cats are like, dude, you're in the forest. Where you at? Birds every. And I'm just chilling there with my mom. Shout out Ayama one time, and it's like, yo, bro, how you been doing? I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm good, man. Ah, I'm, I'm okay. You feel yeah. me? He's like, yo, bro, I need you back, bro. You've got an assignment, and like, yo, this cat. My mom's afraid. Like, how am I gonna deal with being back into society? Mm. Is this kid even well enough to be able to do this? You know, like, I'm like, yo, bro. Like a few months ago, I could barely walk. I could barely get out of my bed, bro. How you expect me to do this? Like, come on, bro. We have an assignment, bro. We have to do this work. You feel me? And I'm like, ah, demand is demand on balaya, jo. Like so, this is the concept. This is the concept. This is the concept. And I, hey, do my own bola, yeah, Joe. But hey, I got up in the Batmobile, you know, just like I'm a kid, so I'm, 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 you know, like yo, damn, how am I gonna do this? You know, all draped up with the shandies, you know, cloth gang over everything. Get into the shandy, you know what I'm talking about? Cool, skr skr. Come on, it's the new generation, bro. Hop up in the shandy in the car, and it's like. Yo, being back here was tough. Yo, being back here was tough. The, these places are like, the energy is hectic. The vibration is crazy. Like, it's not easy being an artist, you know? It's not easy being a vessel. But um, I flop with the homie and do for like, you know, feeling it in his spirit that he needed to bring me out. It was necessary for me. I needed that, you know what I'm saying? Because... It was during the pandemic. We haven't had income in a long time. We are uncertain, like, what's going to happen to us? So that, you're trying to go through a spiritual metamorphosis. In fact, that's exactly what's happening. But you're still stuck in the matrix, like, hey, how am I going to make it? Am I going to survive in all of this nonsense? You feel me? So that gave me courage. That was, like, the first job I did when I came out. That gave me courage, like, okay. Now we good, bro. You blessed. You you chosen. You ordained, bro. And I think this is 
This is a piece for, for hope. It's a piece for courage. I mean, we were grilling her the other day. We're tired of hope. False hope for what? We're tired of that nonsense. We're tired of the lies. We're tired of feeling like this. You feel me? We're tired of like, am I gonna make it? I wanna make it. And you're gonna tell me about hope. But through the work, we still hope. You know, you see Tim, you, f- yeah. you know, holding a breath. You feel me? You hear the tunes. You know what I'm saying? Those are those ancient tribal tunes, bro, of suppression. You feel me? Mm. But when she f- when she breathes, we need that. We all need that, bro. Bonafide, if you yeah. can produce this shandy yeah, for you going through <laughs> what you me. went through, yeah. then I was right in saying you're the genius. Thank you for your work. I appreciate your talent to the both of you. Thank, thank you so much for thank joining you. me. Thank you for your time. Continue doing the work that you're doing. Thank you. See you just after the break. Quick, quick. With another change of things around here on set. Welcome back to Onset, and we are still in conversation about Magnificent Seven. And I've been so excited to actually introduce you guys to the lady who jumps on the table. You have to see the show. Like, Tafula in Masone, and then she goes, shh, shh. You had me on my seat. Yo, boy, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Tell me about your involvement. That, that, let's talk about that particular piece, okay. that moment that I'm referring to. What does that mean to you and how did you prepare for it? Can I just speak about my involvement in oh, yeah. the piece? Oh. Um, Tim, I'm so good to call my good. And I must say, too much. But then it is what it is. So much because I have a voice, which is something that I did not I did not have. Mangenza amanyama production. I didn't have uguti kulume uguti ipisingani my understanding about the story. Understand the wam character lengi lala uguti asu tembi. Character as a tembi, Mang Fega and the story Magnificent Seven Nibonani. From, from what you do on the show to the person sitting here in front of you, two completely different <laughs> people. <laughs> so you embody what you do perfectly. Congratulations and well done on it. Mm. Commander, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I see you as the commander. Yeah, man. <laughs> thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Mm. Um, mm. My name is Lindam Konto, Kamza Wondimande, uh, also known as Shiva Kakakamela. Yeah, yeah, it's deep. I, know. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, um, my involvement with leadership in Do, uh, yo, has been a, a life-changing one mm. because not only have, have I worked with him, Gu Mac Seven, but we also did Freedom the Musical together when mm. he was the um, choreographer. Mm. So that's when I actually started to work with him, you know, ish. Ever since that, I've never actually 
gotten to say I am not as good as I think I am because they've always made me to believe that I'm more than myself. You see, so yeah, it's just his uh, his stature, his knowledge in terms of his content, in terms of uh, building a show. You know, it's not only about having a show; it's about really needing to tell a story at that moment in time. You know, it, it's it's a it's a demand for him mm -hmm. at that moment in time. You know, and he doesn't do a show without dreaming it. <laughs> That's what I've learned about him. You know, I read him a stage. Let me be the one to tell you that in that opening scene, when you appear yeah. in your beige, uh, not maroon, uh, you color blind. that outfit that you wear in maroon. <laughs> yeah, the beige and maroon. You look like some god from somewhere. Yes. <laughs> and that yeah. says a lot. So yeah. guys, thank you so much. Ah, really I love what you guys do. I love you as your characters. I'm yet to get to know you yeah, as no. your characters. <laughs> I, I urge everybody to just go see Magnificent Seven because it really truly is a magnificent Most body of work. Most so thank congratulations you so and well done. Thank you so thank much. You for your so time. Well, thank you for having beautiful me. soul. <laughs> There you have it for on set. Yeah, magnificent. So go check it out. You will see what I'm talking about. The tafo lagi, the thing, you the piping, you who me runi, who yang yang, who hunzi. Go check it out. See you next time on a different on set.